Sukhdeer Pai. He's the CEO at Magic Bricks. And uh, thanks so much for taking time out. Lots of questions that we need answered. Let's talk about uh, you know, the, the, the momentum that we're seeing in the sector. Because for the longest time, pre-COVID, the real estate sector has been in a lull, so to speak. But now it seems like there's no stopping it, whether it's residential product, prod, uh, projects that are selling out like hotcakes. Um, you know, we've been talking about the pricing momentum that we're seeing. What is it that you're looking at for the sector ahead? Is there just going to be this momentum that will continue? Hi, good morning. And it's good to be back on the show again. Uh, you're right. I think uh, real estate uh, as an industry continues to be on a strong wicket. Uh, we are seeing the bull run is continuing. Data on the site seems to suggest that A, while prices are up, and you showed that extensively on your infographics just now, uh, but the rise in price is supported by robust demand. And both in Q1 and Q2, we've seen demand grow both on a year-on-year -year as well as on a sequential quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Supply is still doing a catch-up job. So uh, given these, uh, given how supply and demand therefore position, and the fact that sentiment in the market also seems to be very bullish, right, uh, amongst buyers. We think there's strong legs for this bull run to continue for a while more. But, you know, I want to break it up then when it comes to what's happening in the commercial markets and what's happening in the residential markets. Give us a broad color on where you think both these trends or segments may be headed. Uh, let's pick up residential first. I mean, what we are seeing is a 16% year-on-year rise in prices. Uh, based on the city, there are cities where the price hike has been as much as 35-40%, primarily uh, NCR, which has had uh, one of the strongest price hikes this year. Demand is also up. It's up about 4% uh, on a year-on-year -year basis and also growing uh, sequentially, like I mentioned. And uh, in general, sales are brisk. Transaction velocity is quite strong. And the upcoming festival season seems to bode well for the industry. Uh, commercial is doing a catch-up job, and uh, I think we are seeing more commercial uptick in pockets where you know job creation is strong. I'm particularly talking about the southern markets, Hyderabad and Bangalore here, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, but residential clearly uh, leads the fray. Okay. Uh, there is this uh, magic brick affordability index which you have, mm -hmm. and affordability means what you can afford. Now, if I see prices appreciate by 25 to on and 25 being the lowest, 70 being the highest post COVID, right. I'm the average number what we have from Anarok. Where does the affordability factor come in? Uh, I mean, I'm sure at some point in time the affordability factor will have an impact in terms of demand, and also how the supply would move because supply is increasing and affordability is getting less now. I think that's a great question, uh, uh, Nikunj. And part of the reason we put this report out. Uh, was to evaluate what could be potential dark clouds on the horizon, right? And affordability is one of them. So uh, the way to look at affordability and the way we've constructed a report is, this is the median price of a city divided by the median income levels. Globally, an affordability ratio of five is considered optimum. But in India, it's typically been a little higher all through. And uh, even in the COVID period, this number was about six. What's happened between COVID and now in the last four years is based on the city, this ratio has gone up by 10 to 25%. So cities which were at four at six earlier are today edging seven or seven and a half, cities like a Bangalore or a Hyderabad. And uh, of course, NCR and Bombay have always been at high ratios, but even here we have seen a slight deterioration of the ratio in which uh, this number has gone up to nine or nine and a half. Right, so you're right. I think uh, the growth in prices has been ahead of the growth in incomes. And at some point of time, we'll have to keep watching this number because if it hurts affordability, then it's going to hurt the end user buying. And uh, there's only that much that I think the investors can take the market ahead. Uh, before I get, uh, you know, Gulam also into this discussion, one follow-up question and pure simple question, which just everybody wants to know, you, me, Ayesha, everybody wants to know because we all either own a house or we have plans to buy, plan to buy a house. Right. From the current juncture, which is September 2024, if one has to look at the next three year average price trend, do you think it would be in and around India's GDP? 
which is 7 to 8 percent average appreciation every year or it could be lower uh, I don't think we can put a precise figure because that will take in the area of speculation. But uh, what I can share, Nikunj, is this. Uh, we look at uh, uh, several uh, metrics to decide which way the market is headed. One of it was affordability. The second is sentiment in the market. Third is demand supply mismatches. Right. So if you were to deconstruct each of these, I think uh, I mentioned this, demand seems strong. Supply is still doing a catch-up job. And typically, when you have demand that exceeds supply, uh, prices typically tend to rise. The second is affordability. Uh, there's some dark clouds on the horizon as far as affordability is concerned. And the third is sentiment, right? So we publish a report called as the Housing Sentiment Index. And this has not just held up, but between quarter two and quarter one, sentiment has actually improved, right? So the average sentiment, which was about 150 in quarter one, uh, is today about 160. So uh, the average mood of the buyer and uh, the average and, and the feeling that things are only going to get better uh, is stronger now. So if you were to put all of it together, uh, I think the market will tend to do better, at least in the short term. Uh, but at some point of time, now I don't know whether that point of time will uh, we will arrive there in a year or three years or four years. I think affordability will take a pinch. And at that point of time, the markets could start to moderate. But at this point of time, I think we are on a good run. Good run uh, is here to stay clearly. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.